microdose, yeah, microdose, 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 dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here coming to you. Old friend of the family, pro wrestling Hall of Famer, and the man responsible for giving the Barbie movie its Klingon dialogue. <laughs> Julia Hemphill. Kapla! What is up, everybody? Uh, <laughs> so happy to be back. The MCU. There's a... Seem to be getting a, a deficit in our returns here. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, there was a time you could count on Marvel television maybe not even television wise but cinematically you'd be like yeah that's probably gonna be a good movie and you're like you know one or two bum bum things one thing that didn't live up to the hype you know ant-man sorry talking to you all three movies but uh you know yeah like i here's the thing i am 33 percent in agreement with, i'm gonna do some scott steiner math here uh <laughs> I'm, I'm 33 and a third percent agreeing with you see normally when you got a marvel movie you know there's two stars so you got a 50% chance of liking it. But any, what I'm saying is, uh, I thought the first two Ant-Man movies were fine. They didn't, they didn't. First one's very cute. Yeah. First it's one's just very cute. It's, they're both low stakes, you know, yes. just whatever. I liked that Ant-Man two played with not having a bad guy. It simply had an antagonist, which I thought was mm -hmm. cool and unique for, for the Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. Um, third one, the third one is the reason I think, Part of the Marvel, like the 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 people sounding the death knell for Marvel. First off, they're wrong. Marvel's gonna be just fine. They're just gonna Absolutely. continue to make movies and everything's gonna be fine. But um, I will say this: part of the reason is that Marvel tried something different, and the audience wasn't sophisticated enough for it. Oops. The fact of the matter is that the major villain of Phase Four was grief, and no one was willing to buy that. Oh, I don't even think that was brought to anyone's attention. Yeah, I mean, no one said it. But it is. It's about the fallout from the first three phases. It's everyone suffering and dealing with this new paradigm and the PTSD that each of the characters have. Like, you've got Hawkeye recovering. You've got mm -hmm. Scarlet Witch and Depression and dealing with that. You've got characters that are, like, you're missing the the rudder, which is, you know, everything revolved around Iron Man, for good or better. Mm -hmm. Everything, or good or worse, excuse me, everything revolved around Iron Man. He's dead. Captain America's gone. Uh, you know, Thor's in, Thor's recovering from his PTSD and depression, so it's up to these new heroes to step up and everything. And you've got a new generation of heroes who now exist in a world that already had heroes, and and all the repercussions of that were in. And and you've got people dealing with the repercussions of this universe altering event, hmm. right? They didn't they didn't save the world. They brought the world back, but they didn't save anything, right? Okay. Like like hmm. you had the blip, people died. People dealt with it for five years, and then you brought it back, and that created chaos because Iron Man had a daughter. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, we really think dads about and their it. daughters. That that's dads that's that's, that was the one reason. I get it as a dad myself. I get it, but let's be honest. It was it was it was you know the world still screwed up because Iron Man had a daughter. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that's the reason, right? And so that's grief and ptsd is is the villain of phase four mm -hmm. and then they finally give us a new bad in phase five and uh they ruined his debut like flat out oh. like how that happen? well and man and man quantum like oh, okay. kang thanos is my <laughs> personal favorite villain as a child like you know that's like my nostalgia you know, 11, 12, 13 years old, those Jim Starlin Silver Surfer comics leading into the first Infinity Gauntlet series, you know, my preteen years, that is, you know, that that's that's my stuff. So I love Thanos. But uh, Kang, I mean, like, as from a writing standpoint and from a fan standpoint, he's way more deadly than Thanos. He's way more of a bigger bad than Thanos. And you had him lose to Ant-Man. Like you, you brought in the like the, the whole thing about Kang is you have all these variants and whatnot. So you had He Who Remains and all that, but you brought in the comic accurate version of Ant, of Kang, and you had him lose to Ant Man. He's not a threat. No one no one cares now, and I think that's the like it was already going to be tough because Thanos was a a um a seismic shift in in the in the movie going fandom right. He was their first big mm -hmm. bad. 
it, it the first time anyone had seen a character like that. It, all this was new and shiny to, to people who didn't read comic books. And so now you've got to top that or at least make people care about Kang enough that they're going to be like, okay, Thanos is gone. Who's this next bad guy? And you made him lose the Ant-Man, who, if you hmm. just stated, is not one of their more popular characters. So you <laughs> like right. when they debuted him in Ant-Man, I'm like, oh, okay, that's because he's going to basically murder this guy. Mm-hmm. Like, like I was like, okay, you're debating, you're you're debuting him in Ant Man, so he can do the Ant Man what Thanos did in the first five minutes of uh, Infinity War, and mm-hmm. instead Ant Man beats him, and I think that's why no one cares. Um, I mean, far be it for me to say I know better than these million dollar writers or everything, but for me, I probably uh, Hank and and Janet would have died. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have had Scott barely make it out, thinking he had killed Kang but at the cost of leaving Hope and uh, his daughter Cassie in the quantum realm. Mm-hmm. I would have Scott barely making it home, suits tore up, nothing's working, he loses his entire family, and mm-hmm. he thinks it's a Pyrrhic victory that he's defeated Kang. And then, you know, you can end the movie with him and Bruce Banner working together. It's it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to get back in there and rescue Hope and Cassie. Cool. And maybe you have a, a, a side of like, you know, well, you know, look, you did what you had to do. I know you miss him. I know you're crazy, but, you know, it sounds like you had to stop this guy. Then you cut to that end scene where you show up, then you show a broken and battered Kang who's not dead saying, you know, they stopped me, but we've got time. We Time is all we have. And then you zoom out to show all the Kangs. Then you get mm-hmm. the point of why Kang is such a dangerous, dangerous dude. Not only did he did he kill nearly kill an entire family, but it still didn't stop him. And there's hundreds of them. Like we're not we're like no one, it, no movie going person understands this threat, and uh, and if I didn't know the comic history, I wouldn't care about Kang. Or if he's telling me this is the main bad guy for the next two Avengers movies, I I don't I don't care because he doesn't seem like anything like he looks looks like a wannabe Thanos, you know. There's so I think, a um. I think that's oh, go what's going on. I'm sorry, I was just trying to sum it up so I could stop talking for you, but <laughs> it seems like that's what's going on. I think the movie going audience just isn't as enamored uh, with this. And I think they kind of, they kind of went for a softer tone and, and four and took a, took a big breather before they went directly into another big multi-arc story. And I get that. And I think the audience just wasn't receptive to it. Maybe they didn't understand that was what was going on. And, you know, you, you explore different concepts and try to, um, look at different aspects of this world they've created and and then look at the repercussion of the people for the people left behind and um I don't think they made that apparent and but uh, anyway I don't, I'm not sure that the audience wanted to see that okay. even though it's necessary yeah. for a storytelling perspective but yeah I'm I've pretty much resigned from all the Disney Plus shows like I I didn't hate Hawkeye it was fine yeah. I liked yeah. She-Hulk you know is it, it it at least had a different ending than the rest of the Marvel series has had. I thought Miss yes. Marvel was very charming and cute. Um, actually looking forward to seeing what they do with her movie or her yes. one third of movie, whatever. Um, yeah. There's currently a set of, well, actually there's only one strike happening right now and that's with the actors. But if that wasn't happening, uh, Jonathan Majors himself is going through some litigation i believe he's facing some jail time that's not he is going, where i'm going he is with going this. through some things yeah yeah is he even <laughs> in the new season of loki because i i saw loki one i was like i i don't care <laughs> yeah i i you know I'm, i think loki might be the best written of all the the marvel tv shows and mm-hmm. uh he he did show up at the end of loki as a variant of kang uh mm-hmm. just just for those who don't know, Kang is a time traveler who may or may not be the grandson of Mr. Fantastic. Uh, Reed oh. Richards, the leader of the Fantastic Four. Um, his modus operandi is that he travels through time, goes to the far future, grabs technology, and then uses it to become a villain in the past. He's like a reverse booster gold. Um, the problem with him is that he's so proficient at time travel that when you beat him, he simply goes back farther, adopts another identity, and tries again. So when you watch Quantum Mania, you see one that looks like a, a centurion. He's from the future. You see one that looks like a a pharaoh. He's from the past. Like so, the thing is, you never know. Kang will sometimes show up, even as other villains. He's had like, and then you realize that this villain is kicking your butt. You know, you've never met him before. You don't know why he knows you. Turns out it's Kang in a disguise. 
Like he's 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 the guy who says I have all the time I need, and if I don't beat you now, I'll beat you yesterday. So like he's uh, he's he's a really devastating dude. So at many many times you will meet a a person under a different guise, and it's actually Kang. So he shows up in the end of Loki as He Who Remains, who is the guy who has basically caused some sort of cause time, causal time loop to end up with him in control, which is the ultimate goal of Kang. He wants to control all of time and basically be emperor of the world forever from the beginning of the universe to the end. That that's his goal is to be the everlasting emperor of, of our world. So, uh, he who remains shows up, uh, and now he shows up in, um, season two as another variant, uh, called Victor timely. who's was an inventor. Uh, only he's like more of a, uh, he's not a villain yet. Um, which is I thought was an interesting choice, but Loki's well written. I think another thing with these Marvel shows is that I've you've heard me say this is comics are a medium and not a genre, mm. so that makes me hate the term comic book movie. Okay. Because when you get a movie based on a comic book, that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get laser beams and superheroes. Like for instance, Road to Perdition is a comic book movie. By definition, mm-hmm. Road to Perdition was a comic book. Got toned right. in a movie. Like, that's not superheroes. Uh, a History of Violence with Viggo Mortensen. That is a comic mm-hmm. book movie. Uh, and But then again, so is uh, V for Vendetta and uh, Watchmen and Sin City. Right? Those are all... 300 mm-hmm. is a comic book movie, but it's a hor- his- historical action movie. Like, So, I think people seeing She-Hulk, they thought they were finally going to get a Hulk show, when in fact, they got the most accurate rendition of a comic ever. She Hulk was Deadpool before Deadpool, hmm. and so she was the first character to break the fourth wall. Like if you go back and look at her first issue, it's her on the cover holding her hmm. own comic, saying, "If you don't buy this, I'm going to come to your house and rip up your X Men." <laughs> like, so like like she she's been the fourth. Wall. She is a comedy. My only beef with She Hulk is the writers said they were uncomfortable writing courtroom dramas, and I'm like, so why did you get She Hulk? She Hulk has always hmm. been Ally McBeal with superheroes. That's all it is. So if you're not uncomfortable writing courtroom drama, don't write She-Hulk. Um, I wish we could have got more courtroom stuff. That was the only thing that, that it was, was weird. Missing. Yeah, like it's it been. I get you had the girl in the town dealing with her powers, but even when you do that, She-Hulk's a lawyer. That that's her. That's her thing. She she's in control of her powers. She doesn't have to do superheroics. She was a lawyer before she got her, the blood transfusion. In the books, it's a blood transfusion and not an accident. And yeah. she decides to stay a lawyer. She just loves being giant and green as well, you know. But mm. she she's a lawyer. That's that's all she does. Every once in a while, she'll do some superhero stuff. But she is a lawyer, and so uh, I think that people weren't ready for a sitcom. You know, they, they mm. you, you you everybody's been wanting Hulk to to get his own movie, and they thought with She Hulk they were finally going to get that show or movie that they thought they were going to get with Mark Ruffalo's Hulk. But instead you got the sitcom, which is what she Hulk is. She's completely totally different than Hulk. So I think, I think it's just expectations and, um, you know, people discovering or having preconceived notions of what these characters are and what this, what this, uh, medium is. And then when you see these adaptations, you know, you, you go on these preconceived notions and you're a little, you're a little disappointed because we're, we've, we've tried all the typical superheroes now. You had your Captain America and your Iron Man and your Hulk and your your Black Panther and all that. Those are superheroes, but Marvel actually does other genres. They just happen to have capes in them. So, um, you know, I, I think that's what it is. The 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 also the the shows. I think um, they need to stop. I think they've said they're going to stop doing this. Stop trying to make them uh, really long movies, and yeah. actually make them episodic television. I think that will uh, result in better quality content too. So it's it's funny that you mentioned that because like when I, I sent you sent you a personal text review of the Eternals, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's it's two and a half hours. But, you know, like it, I understood every minute of it. But I also like probably would have turned this into a TV show because there's yes. 10 people like I would like to know all about all 10 of these people. Yeah. Whereas like Captain America and the Winter Soldier or uh, 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 anyway, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was like, yeah, hmm. Instead of six hours of that, maybe maybe we could have had a two hour movie of that instead. Yeah. Like maybe condense it. And it. It goes one way or the other always. Yeah, uh, yeah. Baffling. I I think uh, that was crippled by the um by COVID. I know they changed okay. a little bit of it, so maybe that affected it. Oh, but yeah, I would have I would have loved to seen just a straight up action movie with Falcon and Winter Soldier working working together. 
Um, you know, I, I like the messages. I like that Falcon can't get a bank loan. He was like, yeah. I, I saved the world. Saved the world like yeah. six times already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good for it. Trust you can't me, I'm good have for it. it. But you can, you can take no. a picture with me, though. <laughs> you, uh, you, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, um, I, I officially tapped out on all the D-plus shows when yeah. Secret Invasion came in. And I watched two episodes and went, this is boring as fuck. And yeah. then I, I would check like the Wikipedia once the show was written. I was like, wait, they ended it like that? Oh, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Like, wh- wh- where did they go wrong? Uh, they completely... I think what's happening is like there there's actually was a quote that sums up the problem with a lot of shows. I think the more I think the more of this content that you make, you start getting people who want it as a job and not as a passion and Ooh. maybe don't 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 like the source material as much. Um there was recently a quote from the showrunner for the Echo show. And she's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, yeah, we're not doing her lame powers and costume from the comic, you know." And it's like it was just Here's the thing. On one hand, you're kind of right, right? Like, like the the the, mm-hmm. the characters' powers aren't visually exciting. So if you want to get, okay, I get it. You already did that for Miss Marvel. I get it. You know, because if you did Miss Marvel like the comic, it would just look like Mister Fantastic, and you're already gonna have Mister Fantastic. So okay. Um, and her costume, yeah, it's kind of boring. And since you have an indigenous actress, and the character's gonna be indigenous, she spice up the costume and make it indigenous style costume. Cool, I get mm. it. But it's still the disdain for the source material. Mm. And I think what's happening is you're getting a lot of people who don't care about the source material. And I think with Feige himself and the Russo brothers, you could tell they really, really loved the source material. Mm -hmm. They were able to take what worked, the gist of the character, the ideas of the character, especially for Captain America, and then make a modern set piece you know, without lean, without going into cheese, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, and like, like they did a better Superman movie than Zack Snyder, like Captain America <laughs> is still Superman. He's a big old boy scout. Mm-hmm. And you, and like you, you put him in a really dark situation. And so that, so that he can shine brighter. He doesn't compromise his morals. He doesn't become, he doesn't go snapping next. Or, well, Captain America does snap next, but he's a soldier. <laughs> he's a soldier. But, but the point is like, he didn't he doesn't succumb to the darkness it's it's he's you put him in really dark situations as a contrast right and so they really understood and and all the characters they they got down to the nitty-gritty of what made these characters great the archetypes of the characters looking at these 60 70 sometimes 80 years of stories and they take the archetype and they bring it forward and and they put a pretty good spin on it but then sometimes you get stuff where it throws it back to early 2000s where they're simply ashamed that they're making something that's based on a comic. You know, it, it's that, it's that, uh, what was it? Was it X-Men one where it was like, Wolverine goes, is this what you wear? And then Cyclops goes, right. what do you expect? Blue and yellow spandex. Like they, they, they go out of their way to insult right. stuff. Um, and the same thing happens with some of these shows, not the movies, but the shows, especially. Um, right. I think you and I have talked about how angry I was at Jessica Jones season two with Hellcat. They did. They they went out of their way to insult the Hellcat uniform. Oh, and, sure. that was um that was a uh, Darcy or yeah, uh, uh, the friend with the radio show. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, and it's so disrespectful because that's Marvel's first superhero. Hmm. Uh, even more so than than Captain America because uh, Hellcat, um, the it's Patsy thing is based on her comic where Patsy. she was she was a uh, a romance comic before Marvel did superheroes. So that Hellcat character was a, it's she was Patsy Walker, like it was a romance comic, and then after they started making superheroes, they brought her back and they retconned the comic as saying that was her TV show, as a child star, and so and they made this character. I'm like, yo, that's a really cool part of of history and everything, and those 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 Netflix shows were so ashamed of what their source material was. I mean, you took a you took an entire season to get Daredevil in his costume. And then you immediately take them back out of it, you know, and then you, you like uh, same with uh, Jessica Jones. What's funny is Jessica Jones season one is probably held. It's probably the best season of the Netflix shows. And that's a straight up adaption of Jessica Jones's comic. And then once they got to season two, they were out of source material and it went off the rails. So I find it hilarious that you, who was embarrassed of the source material, couldn't do better than it. <laughs> you know, I find that pretty funny. And so 
I think that's what's happening with some of these shows. I think uh, with Secret Invasion specifically, to go back to the question, mm-hmm. is they completely threw the story out of – they completely threw it out. And and also maybe it was an edict from the producers not to take any risks. I mean, here you had a chance to press a reset button on a lot of things. Like the the idea of, of, of the comic was that you literally had characters that had been around from the jump for years that had been scrolls and you didn't know. And all we got was Rhodey. That's it. Like, come on. Like, like, I mean, in the comics, they had a character that died in like the eighties or something that faked to death in the eighties. And then they said, Oh yeah, they got replaced way back when. And so it's a huge ramification because it was a uh, Hawkeye's wife oh. had been dead for like 20 years. And they're like, Oh yeah, she's been a scroll this whole time, you okay. know, you know, mm-hmm. or like, you know, things like that. What if, what if Pepper Potts had been a scroll since before she married uh, Iron Man or something? That would be mm-hmm. amazing. You know, like that, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for, you know, Iron Man to be a scroll. I was looking for, you know, I don't know, someone who died, like, you know, maybe even like Gamora or something, having been a scroll, but truly believed in stopping Thanos. Right? Like something like mm-hmm. that. They, they, they should have been, it should have been life altering um you know the, the only i think if you go watch the last episode it gets really good where you see the paranoia actually take hold because the populace is aware of these scrolls now that anyone can be them and blah 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 and you see the paranoia take hold and like for about 30 minutes it's really good yeah. it's really really good and like if they could have if that could have been the five episodes preceding yeah. it would have been the best show they put out so far but um, that was a shame. The other five hours couldn't have been good. Yeah, it was. It was, and then, and then, of course, they go to a um, superhero blowout. Uh, you know, where Amelia Cart gets to shine, but it's the same special effects extravaganza that we've seen the whole time. Whereas this is supposed to be a cold-hearted spy thriller. It probably should have ended with, with a gun to the back of the head or something. Like you know, it right. should have been a it should have been a low stakes grounded battle, not not this special effects frenzy. Um. It just didn't know what it wanted to be, and and I think it. Ah, uh, I, I I mean I don't know what to say where it went wrong. I just know that it seems like every choice wasn't the one that worked well for the show. I want to get into Echo in a second here, but want to go back to something you said earlier. With you know respect to the source material, like I, I there's no way to do this stuff now without modernizing it a bit. Like mm-hmm. Wolverine can wear his yellow spandex now in Deadpool three. That'll make sense in Deadpool three. But when Wolverine's like a mercenary and killing fools in the jungle in the dark, it, it works in the comic book, but the man's going to stand out in yellow and sure he's invulnerable and oh, get yeah. shot, but you know, yeah. that, that that's not going to work. However. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I agree. Um, do you think it's, do you think it's just a generational thing? Like the, just the, the kids today, and I mean, yeah, compared to us, they're kids, but you know, they're all 20s yeah. and 30s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are they trying to hold their job or are they going like, no, we can't have her looking like Patsy? I got to have her look like the chick from Sex in the City or, or whatever, you know, yeah. like, it, or is it just disdain for that? Like, you know, um, what is it? Uh, again, under the Disney umbrella, there's a new Snow White coming out with uh, Rachel Ziegler, who is a little mm-hmm. darker than Snow White. I really don't yeah. give a shit. Also, her last yeah. name is Ziegler, so she's German. There's German yeah. in there, like, so she's. I'm okay with it. Like, but then I I hear her like doing press stuff, and she's like, "Yeah, this Snow White's gonna be. She wants to be a leader, and 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 a, yeah. and a rebel." And I was like, "What? What? Bitch, have you yeah. read Snow White? Like, have you seen it? <laughs> it's a child. She's yeah. a child who ran away from home and got poisoned. Like, yeah. it's kind of a scary I, story. I, I I don't know. Like, I think um. I think for I think for a while there with comics, I think everybody read Dark Knight and Watchmen, uh, Dark Knight Returns and Watchmen and Miracle Man, and they thought that's what comics were supposed to be as opposed to a deconstruction, right? Mm-hmm. Like it was like it's like watching I don't know I don't know what to say how to say it, but it's 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 like watching something that's that's designed to be a derivative or you know it's supposed to be a dark story, but that's not how all comics are supposed to be. That's why they're good. They're a detour They're, mm-hmm. they're you know, and, and people read that and they think like Zack Snyder. I mean, if you, if you read dark Knight returns and you look at Watchmen, you're like, when I, at first I thought, Oh, he really understands comics. He's perfect for Superman. Then I realized, no, he just really liked Watchmen. He thinks everything should be like Watchmen. 
Mm -hmm. He didn't understand that that was a deconstruction and not what comics were actually supposed to be. So I think that's what a lot of people, they needed dark and they needed to be realistic. Look, you're talking about people with shoots laser beam from their eyes and has metal on their skeleton and claws <laughs> that pop out. It's not real. It doesn't have to be real. You know, it, it, I mean, it's just like any fiction. It needs to obey its own rules, but it doesn't need to obey ours in the real world. Right. And I, I agree with, with Wolverine, but you know, when Wolverine was in the comics, when he was undercover, he, th there was a joke. He called himself patch. His entire disguise was just an eye patch. Hmm. He was still Wolverine, had the weird hair, just yeah. wearing a shirt and some jeans, and he put eye patch on. And he told call it over, call me Patch, and that was his that was his big disguise, right? Like it was a running joke. Like really, you just put on, yeah, no one knows it's me. I just put on this eye patch, and everyone falls for it, right? <laughs> like dark hands and the glasses. Yeah, you know? just accept it, man. Just accept that that you know that that's how it works. But um, I think I think when you're in a in a in a flying jet, going to fight a guy who calls himself Magneto, wearing a bright red suit, it's okay for you to wear like. X Men makes more strengths than anyone else because they go they're going to a school, and those blue and yellow, blue and gold suits are their school uniforms. Right. Literally, I mean, yeah. you could, you, I mean, you because you don't want to look at it in real life. I mean, because otherwise, Professor X is like the Coney of comic books. Like he's drafting child <laughs> soldiers and sending them out to fight. It's not a good look if you actually think about it, right? He's like he's turned these kids into a war machine and is setting them loose on the world. It's not a good look, but. In the rules of the comic books, yeah, they have a cool school uniform, which also happens to be a battle suit that protects them from harm and allows them to use their powers without destroying whatever they're wearing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, blue and, blue and yellow suits, it doesn't have to be spandex. I mean, uh, comic books, you know, the translation, they translate it as spandex, but because, that's just because it's really easier to draw costumes over nude bodies, essentially, right? You want to see the muscles, you want to see everything, so you draw that new body, and then you just draw a costume on it. It might as well be body paint, you know, but in real life, it can be armor. We've seen Deadpool make it work. We've seen they made Spider-Man work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing wrong with those those bright colors. That That's cool. That's a hallmark of the storytelling. Um, I think it's more of just the disdain and being afraid to adapt and show the characters. Like, maybe, maybe the Daredevil Netflix writers were afraid to do the suit because Ben Affleck's Daredevil didn't do so well. But... Mm -hmm. If you watch Ben Affleck's Daredevil, especially the movie release, it ain't the suit that's the problem. No, <laughs> you know it's it's Ben Affleck. God bless him, looking you dead in the eye, saying, "Hi, I'm Matt Murdock. I'm blind." <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's that's the problem. It's 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 him and a secret identity having a having a fight with Elektra in the middle of a schoolyard in the daytime. <laughs> that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not the suit, right? So. Right. Um, I just think that there's still a little bit left over, a little bit disdain, especially as you get towards the the wackier characters. Mm -hmm. But it's like, come on, man. Ten years ago, James Gunn got you hyped for a raccoon and a talking tree. I, I think that should mm -hmm. be once that's done, there's really no idea that you can look at it and say, okay, this can't work. We can't tell this story or make the public care. Like, I don't know. When I saw when I saw Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, okay, that's the first flop. No one's watching that. No mm. one is like I'll be in there alone, because even I wasn't. Like, I read every comic in the world. You know, the two comics I didn't read: Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers. Oh, right. <laughs> I didn't really like, you know. Uh, so freaking, uh, Guard not even the real Guardians of the Galaxy. Those those five characters weren't the Guardians in the comic. They were just mm -hmm. five random throwaway characters that. No one's ever going to read a Gamora comic. Star Lord hadn't been published since the seventies. Uh, no one, no one cared about those characters except maybe Rocket Raccoon, maybe. But um, the fact that James Gunn took him and made him a global franchise, no one should be afraid to lean heavy into the the the, the weirdness or the campiness of any character. That first one is magic too, man. Like I saw that thing yeah. four times in the theater, yeah. and then the the other. The, the last two, like, uh, the first one's fine. Excuse me. The second one is fine, but finally we get to the fireworks and all, all that shit. Then I was like, this is yeah. beautiful, guys. But this movie ended 20 minutes ago. Come on. I got yeah. I got a bus to catch. You know? <laughs> uh, let's get back to Echo here. And uh, yeah. so Hawkeye came out and I was like, yeah, it's all right. I don't get the hate, but it's all right. It's a little Christmas thing. You know, it's, it's yeah. fine. I, I don't know why he's not taking care of his friend Scarlet Witch, who's dealing with her trauma, but uh, whatever. Um Echo came out and everyone seemed to have a problem with Echo and I had never heard of her before that. And I was just like, right. 
she's a comic book character okay yeah i guess um everyone poo-pooed the character so hard but then this past weekend the trailer for the new echo series came out and everyone's like oh marvel has my attention again this actually looks yeah. really good what's well, tvma but well, that means it's gonna be real bloody like netflix style bloody and i'm like you guys forgive and forget really quickly when you want to it's yeah i think i think as with any fandom you got a small subset of the fandom that is incredibly loud yeah you know and so um and i and also like as marvel like let's just let's just call the the elephant in the room here break it down things have to be more diverse all right like more and more diverse type of people are reading comic books and watching these movies and you have to let those people be seen on screen uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, comics are a female dominated dominated medium right now. There are more female readers than male readers. Okay. So, like, and Marvel, places like Marvel and DC are kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Um, one, now that creator owned comics like NPC and Image uh, run the day, you have a lot of people who maybe don't want to use their best ideas while they're under contract at Marvel or DC. Right. right. They're not that. like if you've got a if you got a IP that you're coming up with that you think could be an actual franchise, you're not just gonna do it as a work for hire or Marvel or DC or, or excuse me, Disney or Warner Brothers, really, is what you're mm-hmm. doing. So I mean, it, at that point, it's just like selling a script, right? You can write Silence of the Lambs, but when once you get it made by Miramax or Sony or whatever, they own the script, not you. And it's mm-hmm. the same thing with these these comic characters. So they need new IP, but the problem is these characters, these comic companies are old and they were created in a time, all their IP was created in a time in which, you know, there wasn't a lot of diversity behind the page or in front of it. So, mm-hmm. and then, then you have your fans who are loyal to the brand and loyal to what you make, but they want things to stagnate. They don't necessarily, you know, that's why Peter Parker has n- never been married, right? He's, the character has mm-hmm. been around for 60 70 years now and he still doesn't have a wife and a kid right like he's perpetually you know a teenager or if you're lucky a 20 year old so in order to make these characters grow and you have to get the new readership right that's just capitalism too they always want more money so to get in that new readership but to keep your things you you keep spider-man but you find a black guy to put under the mask or Afro-Latino like Miles Morales. You keep Thor, but you have Jane Foster be Thor. So you you have the IP that you can still exploit because no one's giving you new characters. And then you, but you diversify it so that you attract new new viewers. And so every once in a while, though, you get a character like Echo, who was created actually in 1999. Um, <laughs> so she's been around for 24 years. Um, but she's had different aliases, uh, you know, and so you you can elevate them. You know, that's what's happening. Um, It should have happened with Captain Marvel. It's kind of funny. Captain Marvel's in reverse because for the longest time, Monica Rambeau was Captain Marvel until about 15 years ago. And then Carol Danvers became Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers was actually Ms. Marvel. It's really weird. Whole whole thing. Carol Carol Danvers was Ms. Marvel for about 50 years. And uh, Monica Rambeau was Captain Marvel from the 80s on. uh, Monica Rambeau was actually the leader of the Avengers. It was really, it's really crazy that they haven't used her to be the new leader of the Avengers because that's actually what happened when Captain America stepped down. Okay, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> um, I'm saying it. As, a, you, <laughs> as, as a kid, as a kid, Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, was my leader of the Avengers in the in the Avengers comics. Um, but nevertheless, Echo is, is, a, is not a new character. She just has never been used properly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, giving her this spotlight and this... Uh, this thing is it's another rocket raccoon group situation where you take a character that hasn't been fully developed um it's a character that doesn't have a lot of backstory you actually get that with jessica jones too jessica jones hasn't been published as much she's actually a very very recent character i think she was created in 2002 2001 so these characters don't have a lot of backlog they don't have a lot of baggage so you get to tell a story that you want and if you want to upgrade them you know or or flip something to make it work better for the screen you can do so without ticking off any fans um the best example of this ever is actually blade uh blade was trash the worst character ever no didn't have a good look 
didn't have a good backstory. The only thing I don't like that they got rid of when Wesley Snipes played him, probably because Wesley doesn't do this accent, Blade was British. I just wish they had kept him <laughs> a Brit. Because if you kept the Blade movie, but Wesley Snipes using a British accent, I don't know why, but it would have been a lot cooler to me. <laughs> it would have been, 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 been really cool. But uh, instead, they you're, made him... You're a bloodsucker, ain't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're bloodsucker, ain't it? <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, it would have been cool to see him, you know, cut people off. But they made him from Detroit, basically. So, uh, and that remade the character. The character got redesigned in the comic to match what they did in the movie. So you have a chance to do that with Echo. Um, and I, I don't know why people, I have no idea why someone would be ticked off in any way over the accuracy of an Echo show when I guarantee you none of those people own a single Echo comic book. One, because she's never had her own series. So, I I mean, like, so, like, it's, 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 it's much ado about nothing. Um, Mm -hmm. she's a grounded superhero. She's, uh, uh, she's got a great revenge story. Uh, in the comics, her, her father was killed by Kingpin. Um, I'm rooting for the actress because I think that's amazing that, echoes a deaf indigenous character so they went and found a deaf indigenous person who never acted before oh and God. brought her on and i think that's really cool so i'm, I'm reading for rooting for her um mm-hmm. i think it's going to be super violent i think it's going to be i think it's debuting on hulu as well which tells you that they're yeah. doing it on the tv ma route mm-hmm. so um yeah so the, the I, actual I, trailer in the title cards like for disney plus subscribers change your parental settings if you want to watch this it literally says yeah. that on the title card, yeah. So yeah, it's it's going to be pretty pretty gruesome, from what I understand. Yeah, um, she's she's it's going to be amazing. She's been a character that's always been in the side of stories. She's been a supporting character in a lot of cool. Mm-hmm. She was a supporting character in Secret Invasion. She was a uh, been a supporting character in Moon Knight and Captain Marvel. So she ties into a lot of the characters they're focusing on now. So um, it makes sense for them to debut her. Um, and maybe they'll they'll exploit those connections or whatever in storytelling. Um, mm-hmm. but I have no expectations for it because like I'm not really uh I wouldn't say I'm an Echo fan. I've just seen her in one or two books that I've read. Um I don't understand I don't I that I don't understand. That's like someone complaining about Groot before the uh <laughs> Guardians movie. I, I don't like why would you like no one's read a Groot comic. So yeah. They uh, they're all for unlike the other Disney Plus series, whether it be Marvel or Star Wars or etc. They're releasing the entire series in one bulk, much like Netflix has done. Right. So some people are speculating, like mm, that's that's kind of a red flag. But guess what? When they released everything a week at a time, it was also very questionable. Um, you know me, man, and you you know the show. I don't really like getting very political. It's I, I like to tread in safe waters. But let's let's talk diversity. I think diversity is very important. Just want to get that out of the way here. Mm-hmm. But can can promoting diversity be a handicap as well? Example, Miles Morales is the new Spider-Man. He's got two movies now, uh, both animated. I'm, I have no reason to see why he won't get a live action one sooner than later. But yeah. both those movies, at no point do they go like, Black Afro Spider-Man! Yes. And, and, yeah. and it's, 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 it's an Oscar winner. Yeah, Blue Beetle. However, they're going the first Latino super, which is not uh, Latino, (laughs) Hispanic, Mexican culture diversity. And you know what? Not only did the movie bomb, but the Mexican audience, the Hispanic audience, didn't come out for it. That's how bad that thing did. Uh, By the way, not a bad movie, but it's a very bland movie. Um, Yeah, I mean that. I like Zolo, but yeah, he's a fantastic actor. I mean, so he's one of the reasons you watch Cobra Kai. So, oh yeah, I mean it was chock full of talent, but um. I just, I don't know, like, um, I think, I don't think diversity should be a selling point, hmm. like, because sometimes that, agree. that covers up for, I, I mean, this goes for anything, and I can only speak for the African-American experience, but okay. uh, I don't, I would never promote my comments as like, hey, I mean, there's a lot of people who do say, hey, man, it's a black creator. I don't necessarily do that, because I want you I would I, I appreciate the support from anyone African American who buy, buys my comics. I appreciate that, and I do get a lot of support from Black people. There's been times at convention conventions where the only people who support me are African Americans. So mm-hmm. that's not beat around the bush. I need the support of African Americans, but I'm not going to convince them to buy my comics because I'm the same color as them. I'm going to convince them to buy my comics because they're really, really, really good. 
right? So I, I make really cool stories. At least I think so. And I hope you okay. think so too. And that's how I'm going to sell it, you know? And so, sure, they may talk to me. They may be willing, more willing to stop by my table and actually communicate with me because I look like them. But in the mm -hmm. end, I'm hoping they're buying it because they like it, you know? And if it sucks, tell me because I want to do better for you. Um, so I think, I think it's disingenuous to sell things that way, especially when you're hiding behind the facade of diversity. My personal opinion is that, yeah, Blue Beetle had a, a Latino cast. It might even had a Latino director. But Warner Brothers isn't a Latino company. So realistically, you're not supporting Latino cause. You know, that money isn't going to the community. Like Black Panther was a great cultural event, but at the end of the day, Disney is not a black company. So I don't care how many black people were employed by it. You weren't helping black people as a whole by going to see that movie. It did nothing for our community. Did you see the Blue Beetle? I didn't get a chance. I fully intend okay. to watch it on Max. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, as you know, I got a young kid at home, so uh, I yes. haven't really been going to the theaters to watch things. Just, you know, the Marvels might be the first time I'll go in like this year to, mm -hmm. to see a movie. So maybe it's me and you. Maybe it's me and LaDon, our other friend. Like, but yeah, gotcha. that might be the first time I go to see a movie in the theater. I didn't even see Barbie in the theater. Um, <laughs> so okay. like, yeah, even though even though everybody else in this house, you know, wanted to see it really bad, but we agreed that we would wait for it to come home before we watched it. So, um, yeah, um, I, 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 I figured it was going to actually, I didn't think it was going to be bad. Like I, 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 I looked at the movie. I'm like, okay, this can't be bad. The cast is amazing. This cannot be bad, but how are you going to do this in a way that it doesn't look like teen iron man? <laughs> I felt it was more Mexican Giver. Honestly. Okay. It, okay. It yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah yeah because it grows on them and attaches to them yeah you're right you're right so yeah i was like how are you going to do this where you know i'm trying to think of the person who doesn't know the idiosyncrasies of the game of the, of the, of the genre and the character like i don't know how they go and look at that and don't think okay so it's iron man with except mm -hmm. except jarvis is like kind of evil <laughs> you know like um it, they would have done better to just make him ted cord mm -hmm. and make zolo a teen genius right and then just make him ted cord Cause then, then at least okay. you're getting like you're getting like something different. You're getting like a cool like Batman version of the character or something like that. Um, where it's just a little bit different. Like I, I think that would have that would have done a little bit better. Like just you know put him in the spandex, let Zolo be Zolo, let him let all the the, the young ladies go Gaga over him, right? Mm -hmm. Give him some action scenes. Fantastic hair. He's got yeah. fantastic hair. Yeah, guys, guys, he, I can say guy, that. He's got he's got <laughs> he's got. You're an expert on hair. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, you know he's he's got the uh, fantastic leading man looks. Just just put him, you know, let him work out and put him in the spandex. And I would have made him a teen Ted Cord. Just just mm -hmm. make him, you know. There's nothing about Ted Cord. I think also, can I point this out before I Please. stop talking? Um, when people get mad when they race swap certain characters, I just like to point out that by and large, when you look at characters that start out white. There's nothing about them that says they have to be white. Okay. Whereas a lot of times until recently, characters of color, their race was intrinsically tied to their character. Black Panther, for instance, he has to be black because he's from a non-colonized city in Af you know in Africa. Like he can't not be black. like. And then people get mad at me when I say that, but I'm like, there are characters that go the other way, like Luke Cage. There's mm -hmm. nothing that says Luke Cage has to be black. Mm -hmm. He's just a guy who's framed for a crime he didn't commit, and he submits to an experiment. I would watch a Luke Cage uh, show starring John Cena. You could tell that would be story. hilarious. He just wouldn't that go would... to Harlem. You know, he'd go to Manhattan. Like that's the only although. Thing. What if he was in Harlem? Now it's gentrified. Now what it's if hilarious. he was in Harlem? That would be hilarious. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> you know, uh, the, John you know, Shaft originally in the book, so white guy. And yeah. then they were like, what if we got this handsome dude named Richard Roundtree? Rest in exactly. Peace, Richard Roundtree. Rest in peace. Yeah. So there's there's certain characters like there's nothing stopping Peter Parker. If if you made Peter Parker right now, he's a dude from Queens who's actually quite smart mm -hmm. and and gets bit by a spider on a on a on a group outing, right? So mm -hmm. there's nothing to stop him from being Peter Park, Korean dude from Queens, which would actually fit 
because Queens is mostly Asian now, <laughs> right? So, yeah. so like, yeah. like if you read, if you made Spider Man right now with the same origin, he'd probably be a Korean dude or a Chinese dude. Like, like, and there's nothing you have to change about the story. Um, it, but then other characters, you know, it's always like, like, look at what they did to Falcon. Like, he wasn't black enough, and then they made him a pimp, right? Like. <laughs> Well, what? I'm sorry. Oh I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. At first, at first, Falcon was just a guy from the Air Force. But then, the, once he started getting popular, they decided he wasn't uh, popular enough or black enough. So his backstory was given to him that he was originally Snap Wilson, a pimp from Harlem who straightened up and joined the Air Force because his original wow. origin was not black enough. <laughs> so wow. Yeah, Snap Wilson, the pimp. I'm. I'm in disbelief there. Wow, that was <laughs> yeah. that's that's in the '70s, right? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, all right. Yes. now now it's coming back together. Yes. All right, so a little focus is you back. Know. All right, but even yeah. even in the '90s, you look at Blue Marvel, um, Blue Marvel created by Kevin Graveau, uh, the guy who wrote the uh, Underworld movies or created the Underworld mm -hmm. franchise. He made a character mm -hmm. for Marvel. Blue Blue Marvel was awesome. He he tried to retcon a black character into the '60s version of Marvel, but then he had to explain why he wasn't seen until the 90s or 2000s when when he debuted him and so the excuse was well he's a black guy and he was fighting crime and he wore a full body suit and then one day his suit got ripped they saw he was black everyone got scared and the president asked him to retire <laughs> to, so that the oh, public wow. wouldn't be scared of him and like uh, other than that he's just a genius scientist who has an accident and gets powers there's no reason blue marvel has to be black but you gave him an origin which is intrinsically tied to his blackness Right. So like it that that that's the difference between a lot of these characters. Like Echo is mm. she's indigenous, but the animosity that America has for indigenous people is directly in her like her dad gets killed by Wilson Fisk because of some argument that is based on sovereign territory. So mm. um it's it, like you have a lot of characters that are intrinsically tied, like or Thunderbird. You can't change Thunderbird because he is part of a tribe and gets his powers from his heritage. Puma gets his powers from his heritage. So, um, you know, when you look at characters of color, it's often that um, their heritage or something plays directly in to their power set, their origin, their motives, their motive, everything, when mm -hmm. opposed to some of the uh, characters that are simply Caucasian. It's just Bruce Banner's a scientist, you know? Mm -hmm. Reed Richards, he's just a scientist. Peter Parker's just a kid. There's nothing about, you know, he like the thing does not get his powers from his Jewishness, right? <laughs> like so, <laughs> right? He doesn't. His rock hard thing is not from the Rock of Gibraltar, <laughs> right? It's that would be amazing, kid. though. Yeah, like it so. should be now. <laughs> <laughs> He's covered in the Rock of Gibraltar, giving him super strength and invulnerability <laughs> by the power of Moses. <laughs> exactly. Ah! <laughs> that's, that's, his that's, his, that's his war cry. Uh, let me go back to Blue Beetle. I know yeah. you said you didn't see it, though. I did not. Um, the entire time I'm watching Blue Beetle, two thoughts are going through my head. So just to give you context here, um, it's a Mexican family. And again, as the trails, Mexican, Mexican, Mexican. And in fact, like uh, dad, dad has some powerful scenes with Zolo, by the way. Like, I, I, I dare you not to shed a tear during one of them. Won't spoil <laughs> what it is. Uh, however, uh, you know, like. You know, we're we're Mexican. We 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 arise. We overcome. They put up a wall. We go around the wall. We go under the wall. <laughs> like, like they just every, every other scene is like we're Mexican. <laughs> They're also in a DC fantasy city that's supposed to be Miami, Florida. And the entire time I'm like, please correct me if I'm in the wrong here. But my entire thought the time I'm watching, I'm like, why aren't these people Cuban? They're right. in Florida. They're in Miami, yeah. Florida. Why aren't they Puerto Rican? Why aren't they Dominican? Or if they have to be Mexican, why aren't they in Southern California? Why aren't they in Arizona? Why aren't they in Texas? Is that me? Or I mean, people are no. everywhere, man. People yeah. are everywhere. Okay, but but at the whole time, like Hollywood and a movie, it's it's pretty simplified. But I'm confused the entire two hour run. I'm like, why are you guys there? What, as long as you? they didn't do that yellow sepia tone filter every time they showed their neighborhoods, like they do when they go to Mexico, you ever know it's all neon. <laughs> no, it's, okay, it's, it's Miami color, so everything is <laughs> okay. Everything is neon, like 1980s. Oh. It's also gross. <laughs> so okay, so it's not me yeah. then. Something's wrong with the writing. No, no, but, no. Um, that that was 
Like it doesn't have to be Miami. Like, but you know, DC is different than Marvel in that uh, that's their kind of their hallmark. DC has made up cities where Stan Lee, uh, you know, when he got together with his artists and created the Marvel Universe, it was supposed to be the world outside your window. So they right. used real stories and mostly in New York because that's where they were based. But uh, DC has always used the fictional cities, so that you have Metropolis, Gotham, Coast mm-hmm. City. You know, even even in spinoff universes like uh, the Milestone universe, they use Dakota, which is really just Detroit, you know. So, hmm. it, yeah, Dakota is Detroit. Metropolis is obviously New York. Uh, Gotham was always supposed to be Chicago. People say New Jersey, but it, it's Chicago. Crime bosses, everyone's in gangs. It's it's Chicago in the New Jersey. Yeah, but it's Chicago in the 30s because each okay. each each of the villains is a mob boss. Right. You ever notice like Joker and them? They always have henchmen because they were. Their pattern on the on the on the you know the mob bosses, but yeah, it could it could be Jersey too? But I always figured it was uh 1930s Chicago uh, that Batman showed up in, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to watch the movie to have any thoughts on that. But you would think yes, if you had a, a Latino family in Miami, well, Latino is a very is is a broad spectrum. These folks are specifically saying. Mexican. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna pick one of the Latino countries, you know, mm. Spanish speaking countries, it'd be Cuba and Miami. Whereas if yeah. you're doing if you want to specifically say they're Mexican, yeah, you think you go LA or you think you would go the West. Somewhere in the West. If mm. you're gonna if you're gonna say they're specifically Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, yeah. It's just one of those things. You you, you feel weird a- analyzing it, but then you're like, no, why isn't it this way? <laughs> but again. I don't. I, I'm not the million dollar writer, so who knows? Yeah. Who knows what I know? Jamil, dude, I appreciate you being on the show. I don't want to take up any more of your time, but uh, do you want to promote anything regarding NPC comics? Keep an eye out. We got some big announcements coming, but it's all going to be 2024. But definitely watch it. Watch out for 2024. NPC is going to have some big announcements. So check out our website, npccomics.com. You can buy some of our comics are out. We have a great hit comic named Scrap by Fred McKinstry. Uh, it's a great for fans of MMA. It's a young lady who tops out in traditional, traditional martial arts, tries out the world of MMA, and finds that some legends are more than just legends. It's an amazing story. Uh, check that out. Um, you can also check out High Park, uh, fresh off a successful Kickstarter this summer. We have a story of young Cassie Park who uh, finds her destiny in New York City as a college student. Um, really enjoyable slice of life slash superhero book. So look out for those and look out for more stuff in 2024 from NPC. That's what's up. Folks, I do some stuff around here. It's the Waffle Box with friend of the family, Mike Fish. It's the original Waffle Box. You accept no substitutes because it is the best part of Wednesdays. It's the People's Podcast coming to you all the way from the future home of Super Bowl 60. You love us because we do this. We do this because we love you. And for Jamil Hempel, I've been Kush Hayes. You've been you. Micro dose, micro dose. Micro dose, micro dose. Micro dose, micro dose. Micro dose, yeah, micro dose. From the Bosnet family. I mean, because otherwise, Professor X is like the Coney of comic books.